Ready to go. Well, thank you, Carl. And hi, everyone. My name is Johanna Ekeberg. I'm an associated trainer with We Are Movement. I'm, I'm here to talk about flow, <laughs> surprisingly enough. And I'll talk about how we can use constraints to actually manipulate flow, and also about how we can use that knowledge in stimulation to accelerate the learning loop when learning new ways of working and especially learning new ways of thinking. So safe principle number six tells us that we need to visualize and limit working process. We need to reduce batch sizes and reduce and manage queuing. So how do we do that? Well, I know that Andrew is going to join later and talk a little bit more about how SAFE helps accelerate this, but I'm going to talk about what happens when we have too much working process. Uh, what we do is we overload the system, that is the people, and actually get no room for learning or collaborating or getting that flow. So I'm going to start by quoting Don Reinersen. To operate a process at, at full uh, utility is, is an economic disaster. And uh, yeah, it is. And you should avoid that. But how do we avoid that? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by trying to introduce how we can make flow by actually doing other things in, in, in the system. But what are those things? The first thing I'm going to introduce to you is uh, reinforcing loops. So bear with me. What is the reinforcing loop? There are other, other loops as well, but reinforcing loops are the ones that we can either like amplify or, or lower a behavior in the system. So it's a cause and effect. So what if, uh, and it's actually true, what if I drink too much coffee? Um, it doesn't have to be too much, but, but I do. So I need coffee to wake up. Like in the morning, I start out drinking two cups of coffee and then I go to work. So I need coffee to wake up. Sometimes that means that I'm having a hard time falling asleep because I had too much, right? So the next morning, I didn't sleep enough. I need more coffee so that I can wake up, which in turn uh, sort of reinforces this loop and if I don't break it and start working against it, like having it reduce my caffeine instead, uh, it, it kind of reinforces this behavior. So keep this coffee cup in mind when I'm going to talk to you about how work works. So this is something that we need to understand in order to know how can we actually manipulate the system of work that we're setting up through the portfolio, down into the train, and down into the teams. It's a connected flow system. And it has constraints. We can add constraints, we can manipulate constraints, and we can use them to create learnings. So if we start with one of the central uh, pieces here, work in process. We all have work in process. Question is just how much, and how can we actually visualize and limit it? Well, we use the Kanban board to visualize all relevant work, but we also need to work on limiting this. So we have some kind of work in process. The higher the work in process, the longer the lead times, right? So more of it leads to longer lead times. If we have long lead times, what happens? Well, a lot more of the things that are in our queue become urgent. So we're not getting our stuff through the system. So we must prioritize it more, right? So we shout out, it's urgent. This is more like in the old way of doing things, but we still have that behavior, even if we have been working Lean Agile for a while. And when more work becomes urgent, what do we do as a team, as a train, as an organization? We start new work. And if we start new work, what happens? Well, we get more work in process. This is the first reinforcing loop that I, I want to talk about, want you to know about and, and look at how we can use this. There's more. <laughs> so you have a high work in process already. Uh, what happens? 
well, a lot of work get, get blocked. So the more things we have in process, the more they're interfering with each other and stopping each other. It's like an old typewriter when you push too many of the, of the uh, types at the same time, they kind of get interlocked. That happens with uh, us as, as well. So it gets more blocked. And when we have more blocked items, what do we do? Well, that increases the risk of us having idle time. And in traditional ways of working, idle time is, is not what we want. We have focus on resource efficiency. And going into this new way of working, resource efficiency is still in our DNA. We're trying to remove it, focusing on flow efficiency and then getting resource efficiency up again, but we're still focusing here. And it's in our nature when things get stuck to do something. And what do we do? If I'm stuck, I start work. I'll pull something in, uh, which leads to us having more work in process. So this is the second reinforcing loop that we have in our Kanban system, in our pull system that we're building. Having a lot of blocked work also leads to us doing a lot of non-value adding work because we are putting efforts into removing the blockers. That doesn't really help us deliver. It is just working to reduce blockers. When we have a lot of non-value adding work, that means that we're finishing less as we're working on other things. So we're not finishing the things that are supposed to be delivered, which, is, which leads to us having like a, a still the same working process because we're putting our effort to other things. So this is what we usually see in a system of work. And what do we need to do? What's the first? Well, this was a reinforcing loop, of course. What do we need to do? Well, we say limit the working process. And by doing that, we sort of push these reinforcing loops the other way. So a reinforcing loop is not bad per se. We can also use it the other way. So by limiting the working process and removing that constraint where we actually have to keep people busy, and make use of that idle time to actually help finish work, we can actually start reducing the amount of things we have ongoing at the same time. So this is one of the things we need to know to, to be able to manipulate and actually increase flow, work with the flow all the time in our roles as Scrum Masters, RTEs, and everyone else. I've been talking to architects today and trying to explain to them their role in creating flow and accelerating the flow. So this is called a system of work, how work works. And it also shows that the last loop I showed you, how we can use the idle time to finish work, it's actually what we call a balancing loop in this kind of constraint systems. But this is not enough. We also need to know how we work, because in order to learn, uh, we, we have to, to understand how do humans learn? How do we actually go from understanding in theory that working agile, limiting whip, having time boxes that Scrum tells us to have, sounds like a good idea and it seems to be working. But when things are starting to get a little bit hectic, it's super easy for us to fall back into to the old behavior. So how can we actually reinforce learning? We look at how learning works and it's sort of like the PDCA loop that we use for, for how we, how we refine our products, how we build our products, how we change, but also work on how do we learn. And it, the fact is that humans learn by concrete experiences. We can understand theory, but until we actually do it and feel that it's working, we're not updating our, our mental models of how work is working or how something is working. So what we need to do is sort of apply this by introducing small changes, as with everything else, you know, learning to ride a bike backwards. I don't know if you all saw the video. It takes a while for, for, um, for this guy to learn how to move the steering in the wrong direction in order for the bike to go the right way. But he needs to do it until it's actually in his mental model of how a bike works. And eventually, learning to bike the wrong way 
he, he can't go back to biking in the right way again because he updated his reference model on how to work a bike. So that's what we need to do when we want to learn how to be agile and have a lean agile mindset. We have the opportunity, if we work according to this cadence that Faith helps us find, we have the opportunity to introduce learning in every sprint and in every increment. But that sort of two week, eight week learning loop, how can we speed that up? Well, a good thing to do is actually to use simulation. And simulations, you can use them to learn or to actually try out what happens if we change our VIP limit? What happens if we introduce a policy that tells us that we have to collaborate? Because that we need to do that as well. So what we do is we can use the simulation to set up a dojo, a training place, where we can do exactly like we do if we train martial arts. You usually train in a dojo and you follow a certain pattern until it's actually being in your system and you can do that. Uh, in any condition on the street or in a, in a fight or whatever. So what we want to do is we want to explore how we're working and then we want to introduce change to find new ways of working. And using the simulations, we can both set up uh, pre-prepared workshops or just replicate our reality and see what happens if we start moving things around to increase learning increase flow or increase collaboration, scaling across the value stream, things like that. So this is just an example of what it would look like if we set up a traditional team flow, like people trying to move items from one end to the other uh, in a traditional way where we need to keep people busy. Uh, and we try this out doing a 10 day sprint in three hours. So the learning is accelerated. We can talk about the mechanics behind this, how it works and where we need to introduce change. And then we can actually also do this uh, as a tool for experimenting with our own thing or just learning. And the simulations are available both on team level, teams that need to collaborate, several teams collaborating at the train across the value stream, uh, balancing supply and demand, uh, working with lean portfolio management. Before doing it in the real world, we can actually try things out in a safe environment where it's safe to fail. And hence, we learn. So it's easier to act yourself into a new way of thinking than to think yourself into a new way of acting. So learning by doing. And that is all from me. All right, Johanna, I think you deserve a round of applause from, from Stockholm. Uh, one, of the, one of the benefits of doing a uh, hybrid is that you have a real audience in a room somewhere, right? <laughs> so uh, thinking about your presentation, Johanna, would you be okay with maybe a few questions if there's anything? Sure. Yeah. So, um, anyone remotely have a question for Johanna or in the room here? Any thoughts? Anything to elaborate on? I can try one out. Yes, yes, better. If I'm allowed. Yeah. yeah sure. No, I was just thinking about, I didn't really understand the simulations. Are they available somewhere or? So the question, Johanna, the simulations you show there, how do, we, how do we actually get our hands on them and use them? Yeah, so I'm a, I, I am a trained facilitator uh, for the simulations. And if you had the opportunity to, to be at, uh, at some of the places where I've been, you actually had a chance to try out at least one of them. Uh, and uh, so I have access to most of them uh, digitally. Uh, and some of them physically, and I can get access to more. And this is something that you can either include in a learning experience, like a third day of leading safe, or just say, we have a problem with, with this. Could we, could we do something to actually experience the difference between doing it the old way and the new way or changing this? So, so I have access to physical board and digital board. And if you want to know more, 
Uh, it's called Okaloa Flow Lab, and uh, there's a web page and training, so, so you can actually get, facil uh, get uh, facilitating training as well. And, and it's a really powerful tool for, for getting, aha, now I get it. <laughs> and the name is Okaloa Flow Lab, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, can you share a link in the, in the chat, maybe? Or something? I can. Cool. And also, I've been playing the Get Kanban game a lot over the years, which yeah. is a single team agile simulation, uh, which has been super fun. Anyone use it, Get Kanban? Oh, it's a single team agile Kanban flow simulation, which is great, right? Can this, can we run a multi team thing here also? Yeah, we can run multi teams. We can experiment with how to actually create key, key competence within a team. Uh, yep. across teams and and also uh, how to work with bottlenecks uh, in a in a multi-team simulation uh, the lean portfolio flow uh, scaling across value streams uh, using cap tokens to know where to what to what to work on and so the the good thing and the thing that differs from the, the kanban game the lean kanban game is that there's a lot more and this is based on how we learn as humans and it's set up to work in any lean agile framework. So, so it goes very well with what we talk about when we talk about safe and flow. Cool. Is there a physical version of the flow game also? Is it only digital? No, it's physical also. It started out as a physical board and then turned digital during during COVID. So there's both. Oh. Yeah. Maybe a future meetup where we play it together? Yes, that's what I hope to achieve it, it, during during soon. <laughs> okay. Cool. Any other questions for Johanna from the remote attendees or from anyone in the room? I just wonder if, we, if you can share the slides that you had today. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I also share share links. And if you're in, if you have questions, just reach out. Um, and my Johanna Johanna at We Are Movement uh, address. So I'll I'll help you out. Cool. Thank you. All right. With that, it's uh, thank you, Johanna, and 